Good early morning from the Orlando Science Center. They invited us out this morning to experience their private experience programs where people can come and have a private one-on-one -on -one experience with the Science Center staff before the general public gets in due to the growing demand of guests wanting to come in not with large crowds. It's gonna be an exciting day. Yeah, this is something that we've never done anything like this here before and we love the Science Center, so should be pretty cool. Yeah, and it's, it feels really safe because there's there's no other guests here right now. It's yeah. just staff members. And us. <laughs> and then they require masks and they did a temperature check before mm -hmm. we came in. So let's go inside. So we are down here in NatureWorks and this is where we are going to experience our private experience tour. Mm -hmm. There are two private experience tours. One's in NatureWorks and one's in the Makerspace. Well, and that one actually sounded really cool too but I'm super excited that we're kind of going to see some animals this morning. Yeah, we might get to see some animals, do some enrichment, mm -hmm. and maybe put together some food for them. Now, they are letting us bring Jackson in, but normally the age range would be about five to six years old that they would start this. Yeah, so it'd be so. like five and up. Yeah. But he'll get to come with us this morning and at least see everything. Yeah. So we are here today at NatureWorks for our private experience. We're very excited. We're here today with Tori, who is the lead zookeeper. She's going to be showing us around. Yes, that's right. We have lots of new and exciting animals here in NatureWorks. I can't wait to show you guys and meet some of our animal ambassadors. So we're going to go around the exhibit. We're going to start in the swamp. We're going to talk to you about our turtles and how we take care of them. Then we're going to go into Adaptation Station, which is kind of our exhibit that's a little different from the Florida theme. You can meet a lot of different animals in there. Then we'll go over to the Florida Reef, where I'll talk to you about the amount of salt that we use and how we do our water changes and care for those fish. And then we'll go up and do our diet prep. So we're gonna help uh, make some food for our animals to eat. And then we'll also do some painting enrichment where the lizard will actually get to paint on the canvas as a part of his enrichment. And you'll be able to help us do that. And then I have a very exciting rainforest animal for you to meet at the very end too. Oh, so okay. lots of chances to touch animals, lots of um, chances to learn about the inner workings here at the Science Center, how we take care of the animals, and you can help us with the diet prep and enrichment too. So very exciting tour. I can't wait to get started. There's a really large common snapping turtle right here. His name is Frank the Tank. And uh, people ask me all the time about him, um, if he's alive or if he's stuck. He is alive, he's not stuck. So 90% of the time what he's doing is a natural behavior called wedging. They're an ambush predator, so they sit and wait. Um, they'll move out of their spot for breeding, but most of the time they're just gonna find um, a spot with great resources and stay there. So you'll notice that the whole exhibit has a Florida theme. We have our Pinewood Flat, our Cypress Swamp, mangroves, our Florida Reef, but here in Adaptation Station, it's a little different from that. So we have lots of different animals. Some of them you can find in Florida, and some of them are not from Florida. So this is a red-eared slider named Parsley who's going to grow up to be big and strong and get into the big swamp like we saw the other turtles. Yeah, so you can't have red-eared sliders as pets anymore. It's because they're an invasive species. So it's actually illegal to have them because um, too many people were letting them go outside. You want to touch the turtle, Jackson? Oh, and so Tori was also telling us, and this is something that I thought was really cool, is that under the shell, well, the shell is bone, and then there's keratin. Um, you said the scoots are made of keratin. Mm -hmm. So when you're actually petting the turtle, they can feel it. They can mm. like feel the pressure of you petting them. Pretty cool. That's pretty neat. I know of a couple turtles and tortoises that like toothbrush in oh. where you can actually like brush their shells and they'll kind of like wiggle their little booties under the toothbrush and they like <laughs> dance under it. It's pretty cute. And then these are some of my favorite that we have here in Adaptation Station. These are Surinoc toads. I get questions about them all the time, <laughs> asking if they're alive or not. Uh, but they are alive, so see how flat they are? They're brown, they want to try to look like a dead leaf. Mm. They ambush um, insects, uh, but birds don't eat dead leaves. So if you want to eat all the insects you want at the top, you want to look like a dead leaf and float and ambush them and you won't get eaten. So it's natural for them to be perfectly still. Um, they come up for air every now and then. Uh, but if you watch long enough, they will move. <laughs> These are also the ones um, that will, the male will lay eggs on the female's back and then they like bust out of her back, kind of like um, little little jelly filled baby frogs. Oh. It's a pretty cool, I need to check it out on a video. That sounds scary. <laughs> yeah, so this is, this is an animal that's full of surprises, um, has a lot of really unique adaptations. I love pointing out these animals here because they're just so different from any toad or frog that people are used to. So this is all real live coral. So a lot of people think coral is like a rock or it's a plant, but it is a real live animal. 
each one of these little like green um, like dots that you see there, that's a frog spawn coral, that's an individual. So it's a lot of individuals making like a whole colony that makes one big organism. So they eat in a pretty interesting way. See how this little fellow over here, this is a Kenya tree. See how they look kind of like fuzzy and you can see there's like these little structures that are kind of hairy and open. So they're trying to catch whatever blows by. So we have some pretty interesting equipment down here. This is an automatic doser. So it doses the tank with vitamins. So we call it marine snow. See all these little specks? It's not like they're not supposed to be there. The water's not clear or anything like that. Those are actually like vitamins for the coral. So we have it on like a automatic timer dosing session. And then I'm also gonna give the corals a little bit of food as well. So you can see them do that behavior in action. So if this coral, um, can you see compared to this one? It seems like everything, all of those little stick-like structures, they're kind of like suck in, but you see this one's nice and fluffy. Um, so this one's not hungry, not trying to feed, but this one is. So let's see, we can give him a little bit of zooplankton. Check that out, yum, yum, yum. So I don't usually eat my food by having it sprayed in my face, but that's how corals do it. Just kind of want to spray it all over them, get a nice, good piece of food there. This is something that I've always wanted, was a reef tank. I know there are a lot of work, but... So this was that fish food algae jello that I was telling you about. So it actually has garlic in it. I know with our mass we can't smell it, but if we didn't have mass, it would reek. <laughs> um, so it's an algae base and we make it just like you make jello at home with the gelatin mix and the hot water. We let it set and the fish love it. So why add garlic to the mix? Anybody have a guess? Is it for like a health reason? Vampires? Yes, oh. exactly. So it is for a health reason. And it's rumored that, um, it's believed that fish do like the taste of garlic. Oh, okay. So it stimulates them to eat it. Um, but it's immune system boost, actually. So everybody's concerned about their immune systems. We even care about it with our fish. Um, the fish's immune system is actually on their mucus layer on their body. So they don't have that mucus layer. Or some of it gets wiped off when they get damaged. It does affect the health of the fish. So this is a 7,500 gallon aquarium here and it is salt water just like it would be in nature. And we spend almost $800 a month on salt for our, all of our exhibits. So I have some of it here for you. This is our marine salt. So this is gonna be different than what's on your dinner table uh, because this is not for human consumption. This is for making seawater. So we make our own seawater here. So whenever we need to do a water change, um, we take out our water, it back washes and cleans our, our filters. And then we have to add fresh water back in and then we add in our salt. And what's really cool about this salt is it's not just salt, it actually has vitamins in there too. The fish will get the vitamins from the water. So imagine if we were getting vitamins like from the air that we breathe, we, they can, the fish can get vitamins from the water. So I did want to mention really quick that this entire area is made of ramps. So it's all, um, like accessible. wheelchair accessible yeah, yeah which is great there are no stairs anywhere oh this is what we're doing we're doing the private experiences oh yeah all right so up here i've got some of the food items that we use for the animals would you guys like to help me make some of the animal diets today yeah want to start with the bearded dragons sure, sure. so if you would like to know exactly what the bearded dragon is eating there's a recipe card right here. I'm just gonna make a little salad here. Twelve. They're lighter than they look, right? Yeah. Definitely smell those fresh turnip greens. <laughs> <laughs> so we need chopped vegetables now. So we've got sweet potato and zucchini. Okay. And it's up to you. Um, you could do all zucchini, all sweet potato. You could do both. Let's see. What do we have? We've got apple. It's on the menu today. Tasty looking salad. Yeah, it actually looks pretty good. I feel like I'd eat it. Okay, oh, and now the mealworms. Two mealworms. Oh, you going for it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, this is um, something our interns and volunteers as well crickets and mealworms. Oh, They're yeah. not really ready for uh, to touch those little wormies. Well, I didn't expect it ah. to like, like boil. To react, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
they know what's up. <laughs> so now, will they try to eat this? Yeah, and that's totally fine because the worm's going to go inside the bearded dragon. Right, so okay. um, we call it like gut loading. So our crickets and our superworms actually eat a special diet that has vitamins for reptiles. So like calcium's not going to help an animal that doesn't have any bones. But if he eats calcium and then the lizard eats the worm, he gets like a, a dose of calcium vitamins. So it's pretty interesting we can get creative like that. This is what the bearded dragon's going to eat this, buddy. I can hold it in my hand if you want. <laughs> you can't touch He's it. He's like, I want to hold it in my hand. Can you see him? It's a little wormy. Mm. Yummy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, people eat super worms too. And <laughs> cricket flowers, all kinds of stuff. Look at that, buddy. Yeah, I've eaten them you before. Do this one? Yeah. Yeah. So now Tim is going to get the diet ready for the two tortoises for Petri and Littlefoot. Petri and Littlefoot. Oh, from, oh. from the land before time. I love it. All right. So I've got to do a lot of greens. 100 grams. 100 grams? 100 grams. Oh, wow. 70 grams of tortoise pellets. Do you see dad is feeding the tortoises, buddy? Mac and pellets, sweet potato, tortoise pellets. What's in the tortoise pellets? Um, different vitamins and fiber that they need. Are you so excited, bud? He's excited for tortoises. He is. Me too. One of the most endangered groups of animals is, is turtles and oh. tortoises, with 60% of their species being on the endangered species. List. Oh, so wow. having so many tortoise species, turtle species represented um, helps us teach people about ways that they can help our wildlife. 10 grams of chopped fruit. Oh no, I went way overboard. So that's the, the full tortoise diet there for the two tortoises? Yeah. Nice work. Now, we have to do Memphis, the skunk. We need a half a hard boiled egg. 25 grams of mammal omnivore pellet. I feel like this looks delicious. <laughs> And then cottage cheese. Is this just one spoonful? Yep, that one's just our tablespoon. So here is a look at the tortoise diet. Honestly, this stuff doesn't look bad at all. Memphis, the skunk. This looks pretty good. Sure, this looks good, right? <laughs> Everything but the worms. <laughs> and there's the bearded dragon's diet. So Tori is getting all of the tortoises out and ready to eat because if she didn't, then Alice, the tortoise here, would eat all the food. There you go, everybody. Go ahead. Oh, look at them go. Oh, here it goes. It's a race. He's like, I know that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson. That's cool. Are you so excited to see them eat their breakfast? Look at them. You had your <laughs> breakfast this morning. <laughs> Jackson, tortoises live on land, turtles live in the water. Right? Right. This is another one of our animal keepers named Hannah, and this is Hi. Memphis the Stripes Club. What do you think, buddy? Do you see Memphis? Memphis is eating his breakfast. So Memphis cannot spray. I get that question all the time when they're meeting a skunk for the first time. Um, that little gland was removed when he was a baby. He doesn't need to be able to spray here at the Science Center. No one's trying to hurt him or eat him. There's no predators around. Uh, but he does still have that instinct. If he gets startled, he puts up his tail. When he's playing, he puts up his tail. So those nails that he has up front, they're supposed to be kind of long, um, to be like rakes. So they go through the dirt, they grow through the leaf litter, because he's going to be eating a lot of insects out in nature. That's a skunk buddy. They're going to town on that egg. Do you see him? That's a skunk buddy. Yeah. I know. So he's eating an egg just like you eat eggs. That's pretty cool, huh? Is that so funny? So um, Tori mentioned that he feels like a husky. He feels just like a husky. He has that really kind of like horse fur. And it's super thick. You feel his tail. His tail's like a little coarser than the rest of his <laughs> body. Oh, yeah. But he gets like, a bath once a week. Oh, he's wow. like, I know where that food is. I know. <laughs> I know. He loves to sit right on your shoulder. Oh. He reminds me of like a parrot. Like if I could just put him on my shoulder, he'd be so happy. <laughs> he actually goes on walks in the Nature Works exhibit. He goes on walks oh, outside. I know. And he's litter box trained too. So skunks are actually really smart. Nice, nice. Gentle. <laughs> You're not so sure? You want to do gentle pet? Gentle. No? Okay, we don't have to. It's okay. Yeah, you just don't look it. You That's just don't okay. look You can look. Just look it. So we were just feeding the animals over here. We were just getting their diets ready over here. 
Then we come over to this table. Where we have some painting. So we paint with some of our animals as a part of their enrichment. Sometimes it's exercise as well. It's something that's gonna keep them really mentally stimulated, prevent them from getting bored. So to keep them mentally engaged, to give them new experiences, this is one of the things that we do. And our animal artist today is the Savannah Monitor. Ooh. So this little fella's name is Eris and savanna monitors are native to Africa. So you can see he's shedding some of his skin too. It's not like a snake where he's gonna be shedding all of his skin at once. It kind of is in like bigger pieces all the time. This is the fun part. So you see those brushes there? Pick whatever colors you want and you can paint his feet, his tail, his belly, and then I'm gonna put him down and he's gonna walk on the canvases. Oh. So don't be shy, he's done this many times before, so you can reach right in and paint it right on his feet. And so these are, these are safe, non-toxic paints. That's right, non-toxic, washable, and don't worry oh. about me too, get it all over me. If we're not making a mess, we're not having fun. Okay, painting on his yeah, belly. Yeah, paint his belly. Yeah, and this is really Color. easy to wash off too. We just literally just put him in the sink Ooh, and nice. rinse him right off. His front wow. feet too. And painting a lizard. Let's see here. There's one I can see his other hand, sorry. Yeah, go for it. There you go, buddy. Wow. Lots of different colors on you. Oh now he's gonna the... he's gonna make some art. Look, Jackson. Lizard finger painting, right? <laughs> look at that. Wait, let's see. Let's see, buddy. Look, look, look. There you go. Check wow. that out. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool, huh? You can see the, the scale pattern like from his belly. Oh yeah. I didn't really get that many great feet prints. Let me try. That and then awesome. um, did you guys want to pet him too? You can pet him on his back. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Look, mommy's touching him. Did you you see wanna that? touch him, buddy? Okay. No, Whoa. okay, we don't have to, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing great. You're very calm you around all these again, strange buddy? and wonderful creatures. <laughs> you try he, again? He's like, I want to, but I don't want to. You don't, okay, he, he really doesn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I got him to pet a sheep the other day. That's about as good yeah. as I can do. Oh, sheep. This is a Burmese python, and her name is Betsy. Yeah. So um, when you're a zookeeper and you're working with potentially dangerous animals, never a good idea to just reach your hand right in and pick up the snake, right? Because she's probably sleeping. Mm -hmm. So you always want to do a little greeting touch, is what I call it. Hey, Betsy. Here you go. It's a Burmese python, and she's getting close to four feet now, even though she's about two and a half years old. Check wow. that out. So these are the ones that you hear about in the Everglades um, that are an invasive species. They're eating our alligators, some of our endangered and threatened animals. This um, snake can reach up to 20 feet long. So not the best pets, right? I always recommend maybe a corn snake if you want to get um, into snake ownership. You can touch the snake if you want to. Oh, you're not a fan of this one. <laughs> you want to touch it? Go ahead. So Betsy's got a pretty interesting story. Uh, she was actually given to us by FWC. Her mother was wild caught pregnant. Um, so they asked if we would take one of the babies. Oh. So when a snake is pregnant, uh, we call it gravid. Uh, but I just say pregnant because everybody understands what that means. Um, so one of the reasons they're so prolific um, is because they can have a hundred babies at a time. Now do all of those live or? Yes, pretty good um, survival rate. They're going to be the most vulnerable when they're babies. Um, but they're, they're pretty good predators here because not a lot of our animals recognize them as a food source. Uh, they don't know that they can eat them. They don't have adaptations to avoid them. And uh, they've got about 25 pounds per square inch of crushing power. And that doesn't seem like a lot, right? Um, but when you've got several feet of it wrapped around you, um, that's when you feel it, right? So common misconception is that snakes like suffocate their prey, but they actually squeeze it so tight that you stop the blood flow. Oh. So you have like um, brain um, abnormalities or you have a heart attack actually. So it's a, it's a better way to go, wow. so, I, so I've heard. Um, so they have like the heat sensing abilities. Um, so that's how he tracks, that's how she tracks a lot of her prey. It would be by the heat signature. What do you think, buddy? You like snakes? He wasn't too sure about the snake, but everything else I think he was okay with. That's totally understandable, <laughs> right? So we do have time to see one more animal before mm. um, we have our last encounter. Ooh, buddy. Midas, the Euromastix. It's called Midas because he's bright yellow. <laughs> Whoa, look at him. Very cool, right? Do you see him? Oh, he's looking at you. 
It's like a dinosaur, buddy. Very cool, right? Yeah. And these are one of the lizards that um, we need to have a really high, like, basking spot. It needs to be over 100 degrees. Oh. Whoa. And where is he from? Um, this is Africa. Africa, okay. The and then, Mali Euromastic. So there's a little map right over there too. You can see the specific region that they need from. And it's pretty spiky too. It's not like the bearded dragons where it's like false spikes. It's uh, it's definitely, it's pretty spiky. Oh wow. Yeah, this is a really interesting little dog. So this is Lena, the two-toed sloth. Oh my God. And you can touch her on her belly, her legs. You can touch these back claws here. Feel how different uh, this animal's fur is from the skunk. Lena. Wow. All sloths are going to have three claws in the back, uh, but only some of them have two or three, and that's how you can tell the difference between a three-toed sloth and a two-toed sloth. No. Yeah. Da, da, and this is an animal that would live in the rainforest. So when we have our new exhibit called Life, mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to be starting construction on here pretty soon, uh, she'll be a part of the rainforest exhibit. Oh. So we'll have lots of new and exciting animals in that exhibit. Oh, wow. Buddy, you want to try to touch her? I'm going to be very gentle, okay? okay. Jackson, what's this? Jackson, do you oh. want to touch her leg? Very gentle. Oh. Ooh, no. <laughs> Not sure? Oh. No, I don't think he wants to. That's okay. One day we'll touch his flop. <laughs> At least he got close to it, you know, baby steps. Do you notice how the fur starts on her belly and goes, like, back the other way? Yeah. Um, that's for the rain because it rains all the time in the rainforest. So it'll follow like the way that the fur is parted. So it doesn't get too heavy or anything like that. Huh. Yeah, he's got all kinds of adaptations for an upside down lifestyle. Uh, like a lot of the organs are in different places. Oh, you want that piece? You want that piece? No, okay. <laughs> oh, is that funny? Yeah. So this was Lena's very first private experience. We got to have her very first experience was with us. How exciting, bud. Oh, we ate some leafy Pretty though. awesome. I like you have to pet her now. Lena has <laughs> a pellet diet too. Ah, okay. Uh, so we have tortoise. This is called a leaf eater biscuit. Um, so a lot of primates can eat this too, but Lena is a specialized herbivore. We call it a folivore. So she'd be eating leaves all the time. So like I was talking about with the tortoises, foraging constantly, eating lots of different things. So would Lena with the leaves. So we could mimic all of those different plants with their fibers and their nutrients with this leaf eater biscuit. Your sloths are pretty slow. You're kind of last pick of the litter when it comes to good leaves. So they can eat things that are very bitter, very poisonous to other animals. You know, it takes them 30 days to digest the leaves. Oh, wow. So they have more time to break down those toxins. So. Here at the Science Center, she gets fresh organic Publix produce and leaf eater biscuit. So she goes to the bathroom a little bit more than your average sloth, just because oh, she has gotcha. such a nutritionally dense diet. So Look at this tree right here. Can yeah, you touch that tree. Very gentle. It's like a there you go, you oh, did it. Oh, that was a gentle it. touch. Nice. So Can I touch her again? Is it, is, what's her with the it's sloth name? Lena? Lena, yes. Okay. Touch that. a tree. Wow! Was that so cool? Wow, Jackson, what did you think of that? <laughs> so I touched the sloth. You did such a good job. You did great. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> so we are all done with our private experience tour. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was that a good was time. really really cool. We got to do a lot of things that I didn't think we were gonna get to do. So it was just really neat to be able to be so close to the animals. Jackson touched all the animals. We fed the animals. We made their breakfast. It was pretty cool. So if you love animals and you love learning about animals and their habitats and their habits. This is something I would definitely check out for sure. Yeah. We love the Science Center, so we're just so happy that they are kind of adapting to the situation and they're able to do these cool tours. Yeah. So this tour specifically is $250 if you're not a Science Center member, but it's for up to 10 people. Right. So it's not too bad of a price if you have a larger group, but they will not put you with another group. Right. So if like we came today, we were the only people taking the tour. It was just us three. But if you are a member of the Science Center, which we are, you do get a discount on your tour, so it would be $200 for up to 10 people. Right, now that doesn't include admission into the Science Center after your tour. Right. But if you're a member, 
that's free. Mm -hmm. If you're a non-member, $26 currently because the Pompeii exhibit is here, so it's just a little bit extra for the Pompeii exhibit. Yeah. So but that'll, that's only here until the 24th of January. So we came into the cafe to grab some lunch real quick because I think we're about to leave because it's starting to get busy. But they just opened up this Four Roots Cafe, which is presented by John Rivers of Four Rivers. So I'm excited to see what this is. It's like a healthy, locally sourced place for you to get some food. Are you dancing, buddy? Sorry, we were dancing. You like that? And then they are eventually going to turn this whole cafe into an exhibit hall, too, where you can learn about food heroes and sustainable, locally sourced food. Looks pretty darn delicious, if you ask me. Avocado sunflower, ooh. I think I'm gonna get a Cuban. Then you can get pizza. All right, we kind of went a little wild. I've got, we got a Cuban, Jen got a Cuban. Jackson got what they're calling a half of a turkey sandwich. It's so big. <laughs> That's massive. He just got like a six inch hoagie. And then we got- Oh, it's a Florida citrus bar. So it's kind of like a key lime pie or like a key lime bar. And then we got him some yogurt and granola with blueberries too. I think with him, we just get him different things because I don't know what he's going to eat. <laughs> yeah, sometimes he eats. So yesterday I gave him like sweet potatoes and broccoli and i'm like oh no he's not gonna like this broccoli yeah. he didn't want the sweet potatoes he just wanted the broccoli he loved the broccoli all right so we're all done with our lunch from four roots cafe it was delicious yeah really enjoyed it the cuban was really good yeah all of the like the little dessert bar that we got was fantastic mm -hmm. jackson loved his turkey i feel like so before they used to have a subway <coughs> as like the food option and i think this is a nice change yeah it's just nice to have like a local restaurant I like it. Yeah, I had a fantastic time. I really enjoyed the private experience. Yeah, that was really cool. And it's something that, so um, we didn't mention this before, but they were saying that each VIP tour is totally different because you're going to see different animals every time. Right. You're going to be doing different things. The same like painting, you know, petting an animal, feeding an animal, those things you're going to be doing, but with different animals every time. So you could have this experience multiple times and they would all be different. Yeah. And then they also have another experience in their maker space, which we talked about earlier, and I want to come back and do that. They said you could make a succulent garden, which I thought was really cool, and you can also make mouse ears. Yeah. Which is pretty neat. So, and then they teach you how to 3D print something, and then by the end of the, the morning, you actually 3D print something. Yeah, like you make the code, like you program it. Yeah. So I thought that was sounded really awesome. Yeah. So maybe we'll come back and do that one. Yeah, I would love to, to check it out for sure. So. All in all, a fantastic trip out to the Orlando Science Center. I'm going to link some other Science Center videos down below because we've seen so many cool exhibits here. Just to give you an idea of the other things that they do. Yeah. They do have traveling exhibits, so you won't always see these same exhibits. But I'll link those videos down below because we, we come here often and we just really like what the Science Center is doing. Oh, one last thing is we got to keep the Savannah Monitor artwork that was made. They this honestly is... like turned out pretty cool. Yeah, this looks fantastic. But all in all, fantastic trip. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. Now, now it's time, time to, to pay, pay the, the price. price.